Welcome to another program of Alberta's Century of Service, Stories of Alberta's Military History. My name is Ian Parkinson, and I'm here today with Don Gerling, and also I'd like to welcome John Stuber. John is a Korean veteran with the Princess Patricia's Canadian Light Infantry, and he served there from 1950. Good morning, John. Welcome. So where were you born, John? Hatton. So Hatton, Saskatchewan? Hatton, Saskatchewan. It's no longer there. So how many people lived in Hatton when you were born? Oh, about 150. Ah, so, this, so you're, you come from a rural farming background? Yeah. So then, how old were you when you joined the military? I was uh, 1950. I go, I go with the year. Okay. So I was 20 years. So 20 years old. Where did you sign up? In, in Regina. Okay, and you, which regiment did you join? The uh, Princess Patricia Canadian Light Infantry. And that would be the 2nd Battalion? 2nd Battalion. Okay, so what possessed you to go from being a Saskatchewan farm boy to joining the military? Adventure. Did you get any? Did I? Did you get any adventure? Yeah, lots of it. <laughs> okay, so you signed up. Obviously, you put your name at the bottom of the contract. And then, where did you sign up? In Regina? In Regina, yes. So once they signed up in Regina, where did you go from there? I uh, went uh, to Calgary for my training. You my basic, basic, basic training was in, in Calgary. Would that have been in the Miwata barracks downtown? No, in uh, Curry barracks. Curry barracks. Yeah. Oh, right, Patricia's. So you did your basic training. How was that? It was tough. Tough for a Saskatchewan farm boy. It's tough. Yeah, but they were tough. They were tough on us, the first battalion. So the what kind of a uniform did you wear at that time? Oh, <clears throat> anything we get a hold of. So it was the old brown wool with yeah. the pockets yeah. and the pockets here and pockets there. Okay. The old, the old uh, Second World War uniform. That smelled of the funny material, the funny uh, yeah. preservative. Yeah. So you were a private with the. Princess Patricia's Canadian Light Infantry in Calgary. You finished your basic training. How long did your basic training take? Six weeks. Six weeks? Yes. Okay. Barely long enough to learn how to tie your shoelaces. Then, uh, then we were, went to uh, Fort Lewis, Washington. I mean, we went to Wainwright, and it was so cold in Wainwright that they sent us all down to Fort Lewis, Washington. So how did you find Fort Lewis, Washington? Oh, that was a nice after coming out of this cold weather. So what did you do in Fort Lewis? We finished our training. Oh, you're still finishing your basic training? Yeah. No, we finished our basic training. We were in training then. Okay, so you're taking your advanced infantryman. Yeah. Did you select a trade at that time, or did you stay as an infantryman? I stayed as an infantryman, yeah. So then your training in Fort Lewis is over. What happened then? They said this, uh, give us all uh, <coughs> two weeks leave, and then from there we went to Japan. So you had two weeks leaving around Lewis, Washington, or did you come back to Canada? Come back to Maple Creek. Came, oh, so you came home? I came home, yeah. Tall and tanned and in a sharp uniform? Oh, with a yeah, thing. sharp. Okay. <coughs> so then once your two weeks leave were, was over at home, where did you go to get on however transport took you to Korea? Well, we went to, uh, we went back to Fort Lewis. Okay. And then from Fort Lewis, they put us on a ship in, in uh, uh, Long Beach. Long Beach, California. Long Beach, California. And there's where we went to, uh, to Japan. Oh, so, so you've seen a lot of the world. Yes, I did. So... They put you on a ship in Long Beach, California, and sail you to Korea? Yeah. No, actually, I'm wrong there. It wasn't Long Beach. It was Seattle. So you sailed from Seattle to Japan? To Japan. Went oh. from there to uh, Curry, Japan. That was a military, Canadian military base. Okay. And uh, after doing some training there, we, went to, we were shipped on to Korea. So where you got to Korea by train? Yeah, we went to, by train from uh, from uh, 
Curry. Okay. Down to, uh, see, I just forget the name of this place. Sesavoy. So, okay, so when you got off the train in Korea, what were your first, what was your first reaction? I mean, you're a farm boy from Saskatchewan. You've now seen Fort Lewis, Washington. You've been through Long Beach, California. You've sailed across the Pacific Ocean. You've landed in Japan, which I imagine at that point was still recovering from the Second World War. Yeah. And now you've moved to Korea. And this, this must have been pretty exciting. It was very exciting. And you would have been, what, about 22 at this point? No. Uh, uh in 1950, I would be. Uh, that was in 1950. I was I was uh, 20 years old. Wow. So it's, okay. So you've landed in Korea. You're with the Second Battalion, Princess Patricia's. What happened then? Well, after we got there, we, they shipped us out to uh, Seoul. Okay. And then, uh, then they shipped us up to the. In fact, we t we were we were replacement for. Uh, uh, what was that big battle they had there in Kapiong? Yeah, we were replacement for the Kapiong. Now, Kapiong holds a lot of memories and nostalgia for the Princess Patricia. Yes. Because I, I, I can remember there was pretty much always a barrack block somewhere in any base was called Kapiong. So that you got there after? Yes, uh, we were, we were uh, replacement force after that. Okay, so... Did you see? Did you see any action at that point? No, we were more or less filling in. Okay, so then, you, how long did you stay in that area? For about uh, six months. Okay, so now six. You've had six months in Korea. Um, anything interesting happened in that six months? Not really. Those, those of us who've been shot at appreciate the, the dull and the boredom. Yeah. So your six months are up, then what? Well, then we were, we were sent uh, to a place called Hurry Curry, I think it was called. There was a, there was a uh, where they uh, give you a leave. Okay. So we went there for about two weeks on leave. Okay. It was, uh, it was very nice there. They treated us excellent. So there was warm, soft blankets, warm beds. Warm blankets. Hot food. Warm food. So that was, yes, because you spent close to six months here in the field. Now you've got two weeks where you can have a hot shower every day. Hot shower. Okay, so your two weeks leave her up. Then what happened? And we sent, they sent us back to our unit then. Okay. And how long did that take? Then we had a shower in a homemade tub. <laughs> Forty-five gallon barrels on the yeah. side. Yes. So I should have had some pictures. I had some pictures at home of that I should have showed you. Okay. But, uh, so, how long were you in Korea altogether? In Korea, and Japan, I put in eighteen months. Which is a fairly long deployment. Yes, I was only supposed to be there for. for for eight months. So were you there that long because you needed to be there that long or did they forget you were there? I said they forgot I was there. <laughs> <laughs> Seems to happen. Yeah. Now before you left Korea you have a story that a very interesting story that leads into the fact that you didn't come home to Canada. So how did you meet Peggy? No, her name was her name was Thelma. Oh, Thelma. Okay. Yeah, this is my second wife, Peggy. Ah, so how did you meet Thelma? Well, in the hospital when I was in the hospital, I had I had the sinuses real bad, and I uh, had an operation on my sinuses, and I met her. And when I seen her, and I thought, gee, boy, that's something that's I'm really interested in. <laughs> so that was a. Uh, so you've convinced this good-looking Australian army nurse to at least talk to this Canadian boy from Saskatchewan. How did you convince her to marry her? I, to, uh, I don't know. I just sort of met her, met her, and she asked me to come up here to the barracks for a cup of tea, and I said, okay. 
And I says, you know, I says, I think I'll go to Australia and I'll get married to you. And she says, uh, I doubt that very much. And I said, don't be too sure of yourself. I do funny things. <laughs> so so I, I sort of got kept in touch with her. Right. And, uh, and then I was sent back to Japan, uh, to Korea. And of course, we lost contact. Oh. And I come back the second time. And uh, I asked around of where Thaba was. And they said she was in Tokyo. And I uh, asked my commanding officer if I could get some leave to go to Tokyo, which I did. And uh, I went up to Tokyo and I brought her down at the, at the Strider Hospital in Tokyo. Ah, so how long did it take you before you asked her to marry her? Not very long. <laughs> you figure you grab this girl while the going's yeah, good? Yeah. Okay. She said that'll never happen, and I says, "Oh, I says, don't be too sure of yourself." And uh, I uh, went and asked my commanding officer if I could. Uh, I mean, I was due to go home then. Oh, so this is the end of the eighteen months. Your deployment yes. is over, yeah. and you're going to be repatriated back to Canada. And I says, uh, "What is? Uh, I don't want to go home. I want to go to Australia instead." I says, "I met this uh, Australian nurse." And I want to get married. And he says, uh, he said, we can't do that. He said, we have to send you back home. And I says, uh, he says, well, you'll be missed back home. And I said, not really. I don't think I'll be missed back home. And uh, after going through a lot of rigmarole, the commanding officer said, I'll see what I can do for you. And okay. a month later, he called me to his office. And he says that uh, everything's been arranged. If, you sure you want to go to Australia? And I said, yes, I do. So uh, then I asked, uh, I asked this Australian nurse, I says, uh, if I go to Australia, I says, will you bury me? And she says, you can't even get to Australia. And I said, yes, I got permission to go there. I was the only one out of 30, 36,000 that was released in the Far East. Ah, so you. You're an unusual man to begin with, John. Yeah. Okay, so now you're going to be released out of the Canadian forces to Australia. Australia, yeah. So then, where did you wind up in Australia? In uh, Sydney, Australia. Okay. And then I finally got a job on, uh, on the highway department over there. So you did marry Thelma. I did marry Thelma, yeah. Okay. She come home. She come home in December and I married her in December. Okay, so did she come back to Australia after you or before? After me. Okay. Yeah. So you were waiting at the harbour of the train station <laughs> with flowers and <laughs> yeah. So how did you find your time in Australia? Oh, I thought it was very a very beautiful place. So it's, it's pretty much like Saskatchewan. It's yeah. big and flat. Big and flat, yeah. Okay. So Sydney, you... Sydney is big, very big. So besides, what did you do for the Department of Highways? I worked on the bridges. Okay. We had wooden bridges in those days, and there was a lot of repairs to be done. The, you know, they had big trucks were coming in, and they were hard on the wooden highways, on wooden bridges. Well, they also have some very big insects that eat wood as well. <laughs> so how long were you in Australia? I was in Australia roughly seven years. Okay, and then what happened? And then I uh, decided that we'd come back to Canada. Okay, was there any particular reason why you wanted to come back to Canada? Well, I thought I'd better go home and see my parents after. I haven't been, I've never seen them since I joined the Army, so. Yeah, because at this point now we're talking, what, 1958? 1958, I come home. I was two at the time, so I barely remember that. So what did Thelma think of Canada? Well, when she first got here, it is, you know, Australia's a... Tad warmer. Yeah, it, it, it's, <laughs> it's, you know, it's a different place, you know, different yeah. than Canada. So you landed up back in Maple Creek? 
in Maple Creek, and then from there I went to Palm Springs. And I lived in Palm Springs for a number of years. Uh, you do get around. Yeah. Okay. What was the attraction for Palm Springs? Well, when I drove into Palm Springs, they had all these beautiful lights on their palm trees, and I said to the wife, I said, this is where we're safe. Okay. I, I mean, I've got quite a story behind that. Matter of fact, I'm writing a book. Oh, okay. And the book's called? My Adventures. Okay, so what was your adventure in Palm Springs? The weather. Okay. It's obviously a lot like Australia. It's warm and dry. It's warm, yeah. Okay, how long were you in Palm Springs? Oh, about uh, five or six years. Uh, what did you... I, was, I, uh, I did several things there. I was a painter f for construction. Okay. And I also worked at the Riviera Hotel, which I was a lifeguard. So you worked on your tan? I worked on my tan, yeah. And, uh, so you have, you've got a very mixed background and skill set. Very mixed up, yeah. So you're a painter, you're a lifeguard in Palm Springs. Um, anything interesting happened while you were there? While well, I was a lifeguard? Yeah, well, at any time. No, that was about the most interesting thing. It's not, a lifeguard is not a job for a married man. <laughs> Somehow I think I know where you're going with that one. So after your time in Palm Springs, what happened then? Well, then I went back to Australia. Ah, okay. So you went back to see Thelma's family. Yeah, went back there with uh, intentions of staying over there. Okay. But I ended back in Maple Creek. You, okay, so what brought you back to Maple Creek for the second time? I just thought that there was a, a lot of opportunities in Maple Creek at that time. Okay, and there was too. There was at that time. You started to see yeah. the boom in the 60s. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so now you're back in Maple Creek for the second time. What did you do then to keep a roof over your head and food on the table? Well, I worked for, uh, I worked for the school department. We were, we were, uh, maintenance. Maintenance, yeah, okay. yeah. And then, so how long were you, how long were you back in the Maple Creek area? Well, I was there from uh, several years. Okay, did you go back to Australia anymore? I went back to Australia several times for visits. So yeah, now I would imagine back in the, the 50s and 60s, going back to Australia was like, it was a three day trip. It together. was a long trip. So, long, long trip. So over the years, you've seen the trip get shorter and shorter. Yeah. Okay. Do you still have family in Australia? Uh, not, none of her. I, I have a couple of nieces and nephews over there on, on my wife's side. So do you have any memories of your time in Korea or Japan? Yes, there's lots of memories. There was good ones and bad ones. Can you there tell was, us about uh, a couple of good ones? Yeah, I think uh, uh, Lavar's son has, uh, I wrote out a thing of one of the things that uh, when we were out on a fighting patrol. Okay. And, uh, and there was 30 of us went out. Okay. And while, I, while we were out there, somebody yelled and said that uh, they're behind us and everybody disappeared. And there was only three of us left on the hill. The one guy got shot across the stomach. Okay. And it was his best friend that shot him. It was a... Friendly fire. Yeah, friendly fire. And uh, anyway, he, uh, he, he went... Down. He went down and, and, and uh, the rest were all gone. And, uh, and I was pissed off at him. And then I said, uh, come back here, you yellow. <laughs> which was not a very nice thing to say, but they did take off. And, uh, and, and uh, I, said, I said, we have to get, get him out of here. Actually, he was from uh, Rocky Mountain House. Mm. An Alberta boy. Yeah, an Alberta boy that got shot. And uh, I put him over my shoulders and I carried him down to the bottom of the hill. So, so 
During your leave in Japan, did you ever get to see um, the sites of the atom bomb drops with Hiroshima and Nagasaki? Yes, my wife and myself, we used to go there on the weekends, go uh, swimming at, uh, at, in the ocean near, near uh, Hiroshima. Okay. What was your impression? Did you get to see the, the I, I, I seen I seen the, the, the last building that was yep. there. The temple. And uh, of course, in those days, you were, they never warned you about taking rock away from there. And I was going to take some rock away from there, but I decided not to. Probably a good idea. Yeah. So, so what was your impression of what it looked like? like the, the, the pictures I see, there is, it's devastated. It's all gone. It was all gone. Everything was gone except this one building. Yeah. And it was still standing, so... Did you see any other areas of Japan while you were on leave? Obviously Tokyo. Uh, Tokyo. That must have been quite a busy city, I would imagine. Puzan. We went to Puzan. Now, the Puzan is a harbour. Yeah, that's, in... that's where we left to go to uh, Korea, was from uh, Puzan. Okay, because I see uh, that name sounds familiar to me. The Americans had some... They have a big a naval base here. I think it features, it, uh, some, for something reminds me, it, that name features somewhere in, in, in significant feature of Korea, um, Korean, the Korean War. So did you spend any time with armored guys or were you basically always infantry? I was always infantry. Um, what kind of firearm did you carry? Oh, we had the best equipment you got. <laughs> he says, looking at Laval. <laughs> we had World War II weapons. Okay, so you still had the old Lee Enfield? Yeah. The, the, okay. Ten shot clip? Yeah. It, uh, yeah, it was really, it was old. Okay. I'm, I'm going to take you back a little bit. I'm interested, interested in uh, talking about your, your workup training that you did in the, in the United States. What did you actually, what did we teaching you? What did you go through? Well, we went through a, a training up in the mountain, mountains. You know, very, you know, all, Korea is all mountains. And and of course, uh, Fort Lewis, you get out in the hills there, and it's mountainous country. So we did our, a lot of our training that were, looked like. What did it comprise of? Like, what did they teach you? Do you remember? How to hide. <laughs> So did you do mountain training? Mountain training, yeah. Okay, you did advanced infantry advanced training? Advanced infantry training. So squ platoon, squadron, yeah. company? It was very much like Korea. And uh, of course, you got uh, in Korea, you get up one hill and you think that's the last one, and then there's another hill on the other side. Well, that's job security for the military. There's always another hill. So did you take any other training in Fort Lewis? No, just infantry, just infantry training. Gee. So when they, uh, the, from there then you went to the ships uh, from Washington, what kind of a ship was it? Was it a Canadian ship or an American ship? No, it was ship? an American ship. I'm still trying to figure out the name of the ship. I have it up here, but it won't come out. And how many days at sea were you before you got, you went to Japan oh, first? Oh, about 22 days it took us to get over there. Think of it. And what was the life like on that boat? Uh, not very good. Yeah. Crowded? Crowded. People got sick. How was the, how was the food? The food was good until <coughs> people got started getting sick. <laughs> and then it was over good. So you obviously decided you weren't going to join the Navy. No, uh, no, no. So then you, you get to Japan, and you spent some time still in Japan. Did they do some more training with you at that point? We, we, we went to Fort Lewis. Uh, I mean, pardon me. When we went to uh, Curry, Japan, that's where we did a lot of training. They sent us out into the hills. And it rained, and it rained, and it rained. It just rained every day that we were there. We were soaking wet every day. 
You, you had wet clothes every day. You never had warm clothes. So you were acclimatized when they sent you into the interior? Yeah, yeah. So was, was it particular training they gave you around curry? Yeah, uh, they give us just about every training you get. You know, it was very much like you were, you were looking at Korea when you were in... in, in, in uh, so this is small unit tactics small again? Small units, yeah. Okay. What did you have for radio communication? I don't know, I wasn't into that, so... No, you had some signal off in the corner that everybody yelled at. Yeah. So then you get... <clears throat> you said that you went to Campion, and that's where you were the replacement troop from there, is that right? Yeah, we replaced, we, we, we replaced uh, the soldiers that were in Campion. So, as an infantry soldier then, were you a, a group of soldiers that, together? Yeah, there was a group of... Uh, most likely 200 of us. And were you in smaller platoons? Like how in many? 12 platoons. And how many were in your platoon? Oh, the, I can't just quite remember. So <coughs> did you have a sergeant in charge? or We was had it? a sergeant, we had a, uh, a lieutenant. We had the whole ball of wax, you know? Do you, do you happen to recall who you replaced? Were the RCRs or were they Patricius? No, they were Patricius. They were they were the uh, first battalion. Okay. Or were they no? Well, third battalion's out of Vancouver, Victoria. The, the Hollywood battalion. The second battalion. Uh, uh, the second but We there was two groups of uh, first and second battalion. Okay. And, uh, I was in the second battalion. Okay. So I'm I'm curious about what your daily routine was when you got to camping. Did you go out on, on like patrols or what was your like what was your function? We were uh, we were out on patrols. Most of them were at night. We'd go th through these foxholes. Right. And uh, if somebody shot off a shot, then everybody would be out out there. But uh, it was. Uh, when it was dark, it was dark. And when it was light, when it was moonlight, it was moonlight. It was really... Uh... So you're holding... You have to forgive me. I forget, you know, at, 80, at 88, I, it's, uh, my mind is not like it used to be. Well, we, we've had this conversation earlier where, you know, it, it's okay, I couldn't tell you what I had for lunch yesterday. So do you have any lasting memories of Korea? The only lasted memories was of Korea when uh, when uh, I carried this guy down the hill. It, was, it still bothers me to, to, to this day that uh, everybody took off and left three of us on the hill, right. and uh, and it was very, it was very tough to. It, it comes back every once in a while, so. Haunts you. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, I mean, I carried this guy, and the blood was running down the back of my neck, you know, and and. Uh, it was very, I thought it was very poor on the, on the other soldiers to take off like that. Yeah. So do you have any lasting memories of Australia? I have a lot of memories of Australia. Uh, I, uh, of course, I got along with everybody. I, they started, I found Australians are very nice people. They would... Uh, well, you went to Australia in the late 50s, early 60s, when there was a huge immigration of... Yeah, they were looking for anybody. They'd take anybody. I guess that's how I got there. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's how I wound up in Canada, too. Yeah. So. You have an interesting life, and then, uh, you were married to Thelma for quite a few years. How many years did you... were you married? I was married to my first wife for 54 years. Had quite an adventure. You, uh, you, you, from Australia to Canada, back to Australia, and down to California, and yeah. back up again. Yeah. We we uh, we had no children, so we could travel. You know, so we had an interesting life together. So was that was there? Did you stay in other places in the U.S. besides Palm Springs, or was that? No, that was uh, Palm Springs is a place that we stayed. In. Yeah. 
And it seems everybody's still going back there today. Do you go back very often anymore? No, I don't. Pretty much we, stay. We, uh, we went from here to Hawaii most of the time. You do like the ocean for an infantry. Yeah, yeah. Well, John, I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to, to meet with us today. Um, I look forward to having a chance to read your book because I'm sure that uh, the stories in your book will be uh, uh, equally interesting. Um, so, um, again, thank you so much. Thank you, John. And this has been another episode of Century of Service. And thanks for watching.